Good morning, family. My name is Pastor Marce Winder. I am the senior pastor here at Branches of the Vine Community Church here in the great city of Hampton, Virginia. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our online worship experience. We are so blessed that you, uh, that God ordered your steps to, to be with us today. And it's just such a privilege to worship Jesus. You know, we, we can't get together in the physical space anymore, but we are blessed to be able to come together virtually. We are blessed to be able to share those virtual amens and to love on one another. And I'm just so grateful this morning for the people who are taking part in the service, those who have sent in the scripture, those who have done the prayer, the praise and worship team, uh, the technical team. I am just grateful this morning that we are able, God has given us so much. He has blessed us with life, with health, with strength. He has blessed us with resources. He has blessed us with so very much. And today we're gathering to lift up his name. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're feeling right now, I want to let you know you've come to the right place because the spirit of the Lord is here and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And he is right there with you in your living room. If you're driving, wherever you are, God is with you. And guess what? We are with you too. So we are grateful that you joined us this morning. We're going to have an awesome time. Uh, We're going to jump into the scripture. We're going to have prayer this morning. Our worship, praise and worship team is going to lead us in lifting up the name of Jesus. And we have a powerful word today. We're talking in our current sermon series uh, entitled The Waiting Room. And and we are in the midst of a waiting period, aren't we, in our country? We're in the midst of waiting on certain things. You may be waiting for things in your own personal life, but I want to assure you, we want to give you the tools. We want to give you uh, the the the, the skill set. We want to give you the strength to endure that season and, and to do everything that, that God has called you to do. So when he when he opens up the door, when he brings the healing, when he brings the deliverance, when things work out for your good and for his glory, that everything that he has intended comes to pass. So I'm excited. I want to encourage you to participate in today's service. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share this video with somebody who needs to hear it. Let's have an awesome time today. And thank you again for joining us. Good morning. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for another beautiful day, another opportunity for your people to come together to worship you. We pray your message delivered by your faithful servant, our pastor, be nourishment to our souls. As we sit in the waiting room for you to move into our, in our situations, individually and collectively, we ask you to increase our faith and trust in you. Thank you, Father, for loving us more than we can imagine. Forgive us, Lord God, for sins committed either intentionally or unintentionally. We pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, Father, affected in so many ways by the pandemic still raging on. We place our trust in you, Father, for you are all-powerful, all-knowing, and your ways are not our ways. We also pray for those who have been affected by the recent snowstorms in Texas and surrounding areas. We ask your grace and mercy for your people and pray for wisdom for the leaders to resolve the problems they are dealing with. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are and whose we are through Christ Jesus. We bless your holy name. We love you and honor you. With a humble heart, we come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I love you. Bye-bye. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from Genesis 39, 1-6. Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had bought him from the Israelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. How many of you recognize out there that the Lord is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or think? God is amazing. He is mighty. Come on, we're going to bless the Lord. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. You, God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's a bow. Oh, he's a bull. Do you believe that today? Come on, let's bless the Lord in this place. Come on, sing with us. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill yeah. every promise. Come on, listen. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Because oh, he won't give yeah. up on you. He's, He's able. able. He's able. Do you believe it? Come on, say it. He's able. Yes. Come on, we're just going to declare that by faith. Let's sing that again. God is able. God is able to do. Just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill. Every promise. Every promise. Yes. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, he's able. He's able. the Lord in this place. He is able. Yes. Come on, Aisha. Don't 
give up, don't give in. Don't give up on God. Oh, 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 oh. Don't give up on you. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Yeah. Come on, persist in your prayer. Don't give up on God. Oh, 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 oh. He won't give up on you. Yes, he's a bow. Well, good morning again, family. You know, haven't we had an awesome time of worship this morning? You know, I am just grateful that God is in this place. I'm grateful uh, for those who, who have just been so instrumental in today's service. And, and we're going to get ready to jump into the word this morning. So I pray that you are excited. I, I hope that you are as excited as I am about uh, hearing what God has to say. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we are in our current sermon series entitled The Waiting Room. And waiting is not easy, is it? You know, if you've ever been to uh, the hospital and had to wait in the emergency room, if you've ever been waiting to be healed, you've never been waiting uh, for a spouse, you've ever been waiting uh, for things to get better, right? It's not easy. It's not easy at all, you know, and, and we are studying the life of Joseph uh, and, and how the fact that he had to wait 13 years from the time of his dream or his promise until he actually realized everything that God had for him. But it all had a purpose, and we're going to be walking through that in, in, in our study of his life. So before we get started, I want to have a quick word of prayer. Uh, just bow with me, and we're going to seek his face together before we jump into the word. God, we thank you so much this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, thank you just for this this morning, God, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, it is your air, Lord God. It's your breath in our lungs, God. So we pour out a praise to you. We honor you. We bless you this morning, God. And we want to pray today, Father God, just for our hearts to be receptive, our minds to be free, Lord God, and clear so that we can receive everything that you have for us, God. But we are praying that we will not just be hearers of the word, but that we will be doers of what it says. And God, I pray, Father, that you would transform lives. I pray that you would encourage us today. I pray you would build us up, God, in the faith, Lord. We honor you and we bless you, Lord God. And I pray that when it's all said and done, God, that they will think more of you and less of me. God, and I pray, Father God, that I would decrease and that you would increase for the glory of God. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So again, we're talking in our series, The Waiting Room. And last Sunday, um, you know, we, we, st- we spoke from the subject of don't panic in the pit. You know, and our man Joseph, right, he literally goes from dream to being thrown in the pit. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, the next step in his journey. And, and my title for this morning is Don't Waste the Wait. Don't Waste the Wait. If you've ever been in a waiting room, you know it's not a very comfortable experience, is it? You know, as we're sitting there, you know, we're, we're waiting on our name to be called. Uh, you know, we're looking at ladies back there following her nail. She's back there on her phone, right? And all the other folks are just sitting. You know, so it seems like sometimes people who got there uh, after you are getting served before you. And many of us get frustrated in the waiting room, don't we? So we try to pass that time. It's a very boring experience. It's very uncomfortable, right? But in the midst of it all, some of us will pull out our phone, right? Uh, you know, we may decide to text folks that we hadn't talked to in a while, we may get on a phone conversation. Uh, many of us will, will, will go and scroll, uh, surf the internet, or, or check on our Facebook feed, our Instagram feed, and all that kind of stuff. And some of us will decide that, hey, I'm going to play, uh, you know, some games on my phone, right? You know, I'm going to try to beat my high score uh, on, on that, that, that game I've been trying to beat for a while. But we want to pass the time in the waiting room. And some of us will go to sleep. Y'all ever been in the waiting room and you look over and that person, they are knocked out, head tilted back, drool coming down, right? They are knocked out in the waiting room. But in the midst of all of that, as we are sitting in the waiting room, as we are waiting for our name to be called, many of us want to, want, want to complain, don't we? This don't make no sense. They, they know how long I've been here. They see I'm bleeding over here. They see my arm is broken. They see I'm struggling. Don't they know I need help? And during the waiting room, we do a lot of things to pass the time. And we're like, when is this going to be over? I've been here for 13 hours, right? The sun was up. The sun was, it was dark when I got here. It's about to be dark again. And I still haven't been seen. So we're asking ourselves, when is it going to end? But we oftentimes struggle to pass the time during the wait, don't we? But the thing that I want you to understand is that the wait provides a great opportunity. The wait provides a great opportunity. And we're, our title for this morning is Don't Waste the Wait. Now, on the same token, instead of us playing our phone, um, and, and instead of us going to sleep, right, what if we had some books with us? What if we had our scriptures with us? What if we had, you know, uh, something that we've been meaning to do 
it provides a great opportunity. And during this pandemic, there have been great opportunities for us, haven't there? You know, we could have we could have been back went back to school by now. Right. We, we could have caught up on all of our reading by now. We could have spent more time working on our marriage by now. We could have paid off debt by now. Right. We could have done so much during the pandemic. Uh, so I want you to understand is that the wait provides a great opportunity. And in Joseph's life, we're going to see that during this time of waiting, he is taking advantage of his opportunity. Right. He's not complaining. He's not just just wait, you know, like, God, why have you left me? But he is taking advantage of his time. And we're going to dig into the scriptures and you're going to see what Joseph did during this season of his life. Let me give you the bottom line real quick. The bottom line is this. It says the delay, the delay is designed for development, not discouragement. The delay is designed for development, not discouragement. You know, during our waiting period, we can get real discouraged, can't we? Because God hasn't answered. Things haven't gotten better, right? But that season, that season that we are in, it provides a key opportunity for us to be developed. And we got to make sure that we don't allow ourselves to get discouraged. Let's, let's look at the word real quick. And we are in Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 through 6. It says, now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. It says the Lord was with Joseph, and he became what? He became a successful man. And he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. It says, so Joseph found favor in his sight. And attended him, and he made him an overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him, he had no concern about anything. But the food that he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. That last sentence we're going to use for next week, right? So I want you all to hold on to that. That's going to be next week's message. All right. But as we look in this thing, Joseph's life has taken a turn. You know, last week we talked about him being thrown in the pit, betrayed by his brothers, right? And he had shared his dream with them. And they decided, you know what, we're going to do something with, with this dreamer. And so Joseph, at this point in his life, right, I'd imagine it's maybe, you know, six months later or whatever the case is, a couple months or whatever, Joseph goes from the pit to Potiphar's house. And I imagine that this young man was asking himself, what happened to the dream, right? Joseph, at this point in his life, he had been, he, he's going from uh, the key dreamer to now he's in charge of the dumpster, right? He went from being uh, somebody who, who everybody was supposed to serve him. Now he has been sold as a slave. He's like my man Prince Akeem over here. He's like, when you think of a king, when you think of garbage, think of a king. When you think of a dumpster, think of Joseph. When you think of mopping the floor, think of Joseph. Why? Because Joseph is not known as the dreamer. Nobody knows about his dream in Potiphar's house. Nobody cares about his dream in Potiphar's house, right? At this point, all he has is his, his slavery. That's all. That's it. That's all he's got to his name, right? And, and, and just like my man had come into America, he was a prince, right? He had it all, right? But then he comes to America and he becomes pretty much nothing and goes to the bottom. That's where we find our brother Joseph in our story today. You see, if that was us, Many of us at this point in life, right, if that was us, we, we have been uh, told that you're going to be the CEO and now we're in the mailroom. We have been told you're going to be a millionaire and now we're you know, on food stamps, right? Many of us at that moment of our lives, right, we would have quit. You know, many of us at that moment of our lives, we would have complained about everything. And we would have blamed God and said, God, why have you forsaken me? God, I thought you were with me. God, I thought you had my back, right? And many of us would have said, you know what? I'm done. That's it. I'm out, right? I'm, I'm, I'm done with this faith thing. I'm done with this Jesus thing. I'm done with this marriage. You told me they were going to be tall, dark, and handsome, and now they just get on my nerves all day. You told me I was going to be debt-free, and now I'm getting ready to file for bankruptcy. You know what? That's it. I am done. Many of us would have done that. Why? Because we could only grab hold of what we thought God was going to do, but we can't grab hold of the fact that he wants to develop us first. You see, as I look at Joseph's life, he wasn't ready 
for the palace at 17. He wasn't ready to be a leader then. He wasn't ready to be in charge. He wasn't ready to have everybody bowing down and serving him. Why? Because he wasn't mature enough. He wasn't smart enough. He wasn't strong enough, right? None of those things was he ready. And you and I must recognize that there was a season of our lives. You see, Joseph, though, at this moment, he doesn't blame. He doesn't complain. He doesn't quit. He decides to make the most of the moment. And you and I have got to get to that place where even though we're in a waiting period, how are we going to make the most of the moment in the season that we're in? You see, Joseph, right, he realized that he wasn't buried in slavery. He wasn't buried in this moment. This wasn't his end. This wasn't the last thing. So Joseph wasn't buried in slavery. Guess what? He was planted for his development. And you and I must recognize that, yes, I'm covered in dirt. Yes, I'm struggling. I'm going through. But I have not been buried that this is my grave. I've been planted so that I can grow. And I love this because God did not bury you, right? He planted you. And you and I must recognize that even though we are in waiting, we can't waste the wait. And what what does Joseph do, right? Joseph develops the skill during his season. You see, this was an internship, right? Because later, Joseph's going to be promoted, right, and and, 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 and to to essentially be uh, kind of the executive uh, or or the the city manager of Egypt, right? He, He gets in charge of everything in Egypt later, but this is Joseph's internship. And during this season in Potiphar's house, right, Joseph learned management skills, right? It's the, the scriptures let us know that he was in charge of everything in Potiphar, I mean, in Potiphar's house. And in Potiphar's house, the only thing Potiphar had to worry about was what he ate. Joseph took care of the bills. He took care of the logistics. He made sure that they were, all, all the crops were taken care of. He made sure that everything was the way it was supposed to be because he is learning management, right? He is learning how to oversee the logistics, right, of everything going on in Potiphar's house, and that was preparing him for his later role in Egypt, right? And you and I must understand that during this season, we can develop great skill, and I love that because that's what Joseph did during this time, and you see that Joseph He focused on being faithful, and because he was faithful, right, God gave him favor. And and as you look at this thing, Joseph was just another slave, just like all the other folks that Potiphar may have had, but there was something about Joseph. Joseph was working hard. Joseph was learning. Joseph was doing everything he needed to do, and God placed favor on Joseph's life. And because of that, right, everywhere Joseph went, it said that, that he was blessed. Potiphar's house was blessed in the field and in the house. So no matter where they assigned Joseph to, it got better. And Potiphar said, you know what, this guy is my number one one draft pick and you and I must get to the place that we are no longer wasting our weight but we are focused on being faithful right Matthew 24 46 it lets us know right as you read that passage you know when we are faithful we will ultimately get favor right so Joseph's focus was on being faithful his focus was being on being faithful you see that I love this this quote it says operate in excellence so that others can see the spirit of God operating in you and when you decide to operate in excellence in everything you do, people are going to start looking, why, why, you, why you show up early? You know, why, why are your reports so good? And, and you, you know, our pride would be like, man, I'm just, I'm just, I just got it like that. Right? But Joseph, no, all of the glory went to God. And, and in Potiphar's house, he recognized that his number one draft pick was, yeah, it was Joseph. But Joseph was so good because God was with him. And as, I, as you look at this, right, Joseph knew more than everybody else all around him. Right. Joseph learned more than everybody else. Right. And and, and when you look at it, he worked more than everybody else. I imagine when there was a task that needed to be done and nobody wanted to do it. Joseph was like, I'll do it. Right. When there was something that was difficult and hard, Joseph was like, I'll do it. I'll stay back. I'll learn more. Right. Whatever you need, Potiphar, I will. I'll work on it. I will take care of it. Right. He wasn't sucking up. He was standing out. Right. And you must realize that Joseph decided to operate in excellence during this season. But many of us, right, we waste that time. We, we waste our weight. And you must, you, you, we must understand that there is a connection. You see, everything is connected. Everything is connected. God's his hand is on your life. He has ordered your steps. Everything is connected. So there's a connection that we must see. In those uncomfortable tasks that we are asked to do, there is a connection. And then it's the spirit that we use and we do the, the work that we do that, that results uh, where we want to be. Everything is connected. There was some uncomfortable task in Joseph's life. When he first started, right, they were probably like, hey, go clean the, the trough out. He didn't want to do that, right? It was uncomfortable. It wasn't, it wasn't pleasant, but he did it for the glory of God. Everything that he was asked to do, he did it well, and it prospered. So we must see that there is a connection. Man, I don't feel like writing this report. 
I don't feel like coming in early this weekend. I, I don't feel like cleaning the church. I don't feel like uh, working in the parking lot. I don't feel like doing these things, but recognize these uncomfortable tasks. There is a connection. When you are faithful in the small things, the Bible lets us know that he will make you ruler over many. And so there are some uncomfortable tasks. When, when you got those late nights, right, working on, uh, you went back, decided to go back to school. And, and, and you are working on trying to uh, put together a budget for your family, right? When, when you got those late nights trying to put together a business plan, right, for the dream God gave you, when nobody is following you on your social media channel, when you got no clients, right, but you're working and grinding late at night, recognize that there is a connection. Remember, Joseph was doing more. He was learning more. He, he, he knew more than everybody else, but he had to be faithful, right? So, and many of us complain when we got to do something that we don't want to do. We complain when we got to stay up late and show up early. We're complaining, but recognize that we must focus on being faithful. And when you're volunteering, right, and, and nobody wants to come clean. No, nobody wants to do the follow-up calls for your small group ministry. Nobody wants to go visit the sick. Nobody wants to drop off meals, right? Nobody wants to do it, but recognize there is a connection. And those times where it feels like my, my prayers haven't been heard. It feels like God's not listening, but I'm still praying. I'm still fasting. I'm still memorizing scripture. I'm still trying to share my faith, and nobody's getting saved. Right. We're still I'm still trying to uh, plant seeds. I'm still trying to give into the kingdom. But it feels like nothing is happening. You must recognize that there is a connection. There's a connection. And I want you to be encouraged today because in it all, there's a connection. But this season is for our development and not for our discouragement. So don't waste the wait. Why? Because everything is connected. You see, we got to place our focus on being faithful. You see, our wait time is never wasted. We got we to gotta place our focus on being faithful. Let me be faithful over what God has put into my hands during this certain time in this certain season. If I got to mop the floor, let me mop it for the glory of God, right? If I got to clean up behind the kids, let me clean it up. If I got to prepare a meal, let me prepare it well. Whatever I have to do, the focus should be on being faithful. Do more than what is asked. You know, when we get to that place, right, Joseph, I imagine, was doing more than what was assigned to him, right? When it, it, if they said, you know, I want you to go out and tend to the horses, man, the horses probably came back clean, washed up, right? The horses loved Joseph, right, because he did more than what was asked, right? If we operate in a spirit of excellence, we will always be promoted. We will always be favored. We will always have what we ultimately need, right? But we must do more than what is asked. And then master every task, right? You see, remember, Joseph was on a, on a divine internship, so he was learning logistics. He was learning how to deal with people. Uh, he was learning how to manage another person's household. He was learning all of these things, but he mastered those tasks. And Potiphar didn't worry about anything except what he put in his mouth because Joseph was so good. He was so good that they could not ignore him. And you and I must, you and I must get, on, get to the place where we work with all of our energy and all of our effort. Check, check out what Colossians 3.23 says. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for men. Listen, don't please me, right? Please the Lord. Don't try to please your boss. Please God, because when we work as worship, all of work, all of life is worship. And God's standard is so much higher uh, than, than, you know, the, uh, the, the VA. God's standard is so much higher uh, than Newport New City Schools. God's standard is so much higher than any and everyone. And when we decide to work unto the Lord, our result will be that much better because all of life is worship. But then add value in all that you do. Some of us are like, man, I'm just going to do this thing. You know, I, I remember I was working with a guy. He was a janitor, and he would come to the office and, and clean up, um, you know, empty everybody's trash. But this guy, right, I, and, I, and I knew he was a believer. I got a chance to talk to him a few times. He would come, offer, you know, empty the trash and whatnot, and he knew everybody's name. And he was like, how you doing today? And when I first got there, he said, what's your name? You know, I say, I'm Marseille. How you doing? What's your name? You know, we're talking to each other. I'm, I'm George, right? And over time, every time George would go get the trash, pick it up, he, you know, he would talk to people about that day. He looked at my trash and said, you didn't have much to eat today, did you? And I'm like, no, nah, I didn't eat much today, <laughs> right? But recognize something. George was going above and beyond to make the people that he was serving feel important. And next thing I know, George, I think he got sick and he moved somewhere else. Everybody's like, where is George? And he, people actually went to the company and said, we want George back. 
<laughs> and guess what? Over time, right, George could probably run the place if he wanted to because he added value in everything that he did. And you may think your task is insignificant, but when you add value through the things that you do, guess what? It will be noticed. You will be favored. You will be promoted. You will be advanced, right? Don't waste the weight. You may be saying, man, I'm working. You don't understand, Pastor. I, I work in the drive through You don't understand. I'm dealing with difficult people all day. I'm on the phone, and, and they are cursing, cursing me out. Guess what? When you add value, right, realize that God will give you what you need for the season, right? But add value in all that you do. Learn all you can. Every single thing you can learn about it, right? You got an assignment. Well, why, why is it that, that this report is filled out? Why is it that we have this deadline, right? Just keep asking more questions. Learn all you can and do all you can. Recognize that we can't waste the weight. And Joseph didn't waste his weight, did he, right? Realize that through him in this season, God moved him forward to the next phase in his journey. You see, too many of us are wasting our time in the waiting room. Like Sister Maxine, oh, Maxine Water, she says, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. And today, somebody, somebody needs to reclaim their time. You know, you're in a season right now, you feel like I've been waiting. But in reality, you're waiting, you should have been developing, right? And you're waiting, we've been wasting. And we need to reclaim our time. The Bible says that we should redeem the time because the days are evil. But recognize, in this season, right, we went in pretty much lockdown, what was it, last March? So we're about a year into this thing, right? Realize that in that time, in that season, you could have grown a whole lot closer to God. You know, some of us were like, well, you know, when, when the pandemic started, man, I'm going to read my Bible every day. You know, I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to pray. I, I'm going to start reading books. You know, I'm, I'm going to work on my devotional plan. I'm going to attend small group, right? Recognize things. We could have grown so much closer to God in these last 10 or 11 months or whatever it has been. In that time, we could have went back to school, right? You could have had a whole year knocked out towards a degree, right? You, you could have got certified uh, for this uh, certification or that certification, but we did not redeem the time, right? We had more time than we ever had. I didn't have to, I didn't have to go to uh, basketball practice. I didn't have to pick kids up from school, right? I had all of this time. You and I have so much more time right now, but we must reclaim and redeem the time. We could have paid off some debt. Right, because we couldn't go out to eat as much anymore. Right, we, we we couldn't take trips anymore. Nobody took a vacation last year, did you? Right, you didn't go into the Bahamas. You didn't go on a cruise. Right, recognize we could have paid off some debt. Right, but because we didn't, because we wasted that time, we let a lot of stuff slip through our through our fingers. But today, today is a brand new day, and today we can redeem the time and make a decision. Right, and make a decision to make the most of the moment. I don't want you to be discouraged. I want you to be developed. Right. So recognize, right, we have wasted so much time. But see, waiting, the waiting period is not the time for whining. God, why me? God, I, why have you forgotten me? God, I thought you were going to give me somebody. God, I, I, I thought that by now I'd be, it, we, we will be out of this COVID stuff. You know, I thought by now uh, racism will be ended. This is not the time for whining, y'all. This is the time to be working. This is the time to be learning. This is the time to be growing. This is the time to be developing, right? This is our divine internship because God is preparing us for our future season, right? It's not time to be whining and complaining. It's time to be working. But you and I, we've got to learn how to frame this season, don't we? You know, and, and we take lots of pictures nowadays. And many pictures are buried deep within our phone. And, and many of those pictures, right, are not necessarily frame-worthy pictures, but when we decide to frame something, it is valuable to us. And every time we pass by it, right, we look at it because it invokes a memory. It was special. You see this picture, they have a degree, a diploma, right, from their, their institution. They went and they studied and all that kind of stuff, but they framed it. And you must realize that the, uh, the frame can actually change the picture. The frame enhances the picture, doesn't it? There are certain pictures that you have taken, right? But once you added a nice frame to it, it made it beautiful. It made it something that you were proud of. It made it something that you wanted to hang on the wall. And the way that we frame everything that comes, right, the framing, it encloses the message. So the season of life that we are in, we must learn how to frame it, right? Because in framing it, it allows us to look at it totally different. When we frame it the right way, every time we pass by it, it has meaning and it has a purpose. You and I must frame this waiting period and say, you know what? This period is important to my development. 
And in order for me to get to where God wanted me to go, I've got to go through an internship process. I've got to go and clean out some dumpsters. I've got to go and clean some trash. I've got to go and fill out reports I don't want to fill out. I've got to go and work and be humbled in areas that I don't want to be in. You, mu- you and I must learn how to frame our story. You see, Joseph worked from the context of his dream. And, and, and this is one thing, I, as, as I'm looking at Joseph, right, I can just see this brother holding on to his dream the whole time. When he's in the pit, you know what, one day they're going to serve me. One day they're going to bow down. One day I'm going to be where God called me to be. When, he, when he's uh, taking out the trash, when he's working for Potiphar, one day, right, God's going to place me where he wants me to be one day. But he had to work from the context of his dream. And sometimes some of us are discouraged because we haven't grabbed hold of the promises of God for ourselves. We haven't grabbed hold of the promise of God for our family. We haven't ha- grabbed hold of what God has called us to be and what God wants for our lives. But we must, do, we must learn how to frame things in the right perspective. You see, when you are expecting something, you prepare for it. You know, and my man here, God bless him, I don't know about his shirt, right? He has a shirt of many colors, right? But you must recognize uh, in your season, right, when you are expecting something, you prepare for it. And they are expecting a child to be born, right? They are expecting a child and they are preparing for it. Ladies, y'all know when the baby was coming, what do they call it? You start nesting, right? And all around you, we got to get the baby's room ready. We got to paint this wall. We got to put the crib together. We got to get the bassinet. We got to get all the toys. You are preparing. Why? Because you expect something to take place. And you and I must get to the place and in the season that we are in, I am prepa- I am expecting something, so I'm preparing for it, right? I, you know, I, I'm expecting to go on to be with glory, to be with God in glory, right? So I'm preparing for it every day. I'm expecting my son to grow up to be a great man of God, so I'm speaking into his life. I'm expecting my daughters, right, to be great women of God, so I'm speaking into their lives. I'm expecting a great marriage, so I am preparing for it. You and I must prepare for, for, for what God has for our lives But it only happens when we are expecting something. Joseph was expecting his dream to come to pass. So every day he was preparing for it. So in the waiting room, while you wait, while you wait in the waiting room, right, be a student who is learning. Be a student who is learning in the waiting room, right? While you are waiting, be a steward who is faithful, right? While you are in the waiting room, be a servant who is humble. And there are things that God wants to develop in us so that when we get to the place where he wants us to be, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. Because the thing is, right, if I went and spent all my money and I bought my daughter a brand new car, you know, she's 13. If I went and I spent my money and I brought her a brand new car, guess what? She killed herself. You know, I'm teaching her how to drive right now, but she's not ready for it. Right. But recognize that there are some things in our lives that we are not ready for. So in the waiting room, we need to be preparing as a student, as a steward and as a servant. And I'm getting ready to close. I'm going to get out of y'all's way. But I want you to understand something. Joseph didn't waste his weight. He didn't waste it. And you and I can't waste this season. We don't know how much longer we're going to be dealing with COVID. Some of us don't know how much, we don't know how much longer we're going to be sick. You don't know how much longer you're going to be a single, right? You don't know how much longer it's going to be until that person you're praying for is going to come to know Jesus, right? You don't know. But in the waiting room, don't waste the wait. So in the waiting room, right, don't start pouting. Don't start having a pity party, right? In in the waiting room, don't start pouting, right? Uh, Practice. Practice your skills. Practice your ability. Practice how to speak. Practice your business. Practice how to be a disciple. Practice how to be a better husband, right? Don't pout about the fact that things aren't the way you want them to be. Practice, right? Don't pout. Practice. Don't whine about, you know, why am I still here? When is it going to end, right? It's not time to be whining. It's time to be working. So don't whine about things. Get to work. And don't leave, right? Don't leave the church because things aren't the way you want it to be. Don't leave the marriage because things aren't uh, the way you want it to be. Don't leave your job, right, especially if you don't have another one, right? Don't leave right now. It's time to learn. It's time to learn. So don't waste the wait. This is a season, and we must frame the season in such a way that we can be developed, right, that we can be discipled, right, so that once we get to the place where we're supposed to be at, we have what we need to be there. When, When the opportunity finally came for Joseph to go and serve Pharaoh, Guess what? He was prepared. We're going we're to talk next week about the importance of integrity, right? We, we, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, all these trials and tribulations that Joseph goes through, but through it all, he was being developed. So don't waste the wait. 13 years he had to wait, but guess what? He didn't waste his wait. And for you and I, right, we, we're like, Lord, 13 years? Oh, my gosh, 13 years? Some of us can't wait 13 minutes for God. So some of us can't wait 13 minutes for things to get better, right? But don't waste your wait. The delay 
It's designed for your development. Don't let it result in your discouragement. Embrace this season that you're in. Embrace this quarantine. Embrace, I know you may have COVID fatigue, but embrace the season. All right, it's time to get back to reading, studying, learning, growing. It's time to get back to working on your relationships. It's time to get back to digging into the word of God. It's time to get back into being a disciple, right? It's time to work on your dream, your business. It's time, right, to work on your skill set, right? It's time to do these things, but don't waste the wait. Like Sister Maxine Waters, right, reclaiming my time. I don't know about you, but this week I want to reclaim my time. And my prayer for you is that you reclaim your time. And I want to pray real quick because some of us don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But, you know, you've been wasting the season and you felt like a victim your whole life. You felt like, you know, everybody who's left you, you felt like everybody who's let you down, everybody who's hurt you, every mistake you've made, it's made you damaged goods. You're discouraged today. But I, guess what? All of those things where, where God could use everything. And, and you haven't, you are not too far gone. You know, the hand of the Lord is not too short that it can't reach you. The Bible lets us know that the hand of the Lord is not slack that it cannot save. God can reach you right where you are. God wants a relationship with you right where you are. He sent his son Jesus to die for your sins and mine. And, and there is no sin that you have committed that can disqualify you from his great love. So if you don't know him, today is the opportunity to redeem and reclaim your time. To say, God, I know you have a purpose for me and I want to know you for myself. I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want Jesus on the inside of me. And I want to pray a prayer with you. It's very simple. Just repeat after the words that I say. And in doing so, if you truly believe in your heart, you truly confess with your mouth, guess what? The Bible promises that you will be saved. And if you want to be saved today, we're going to do that now. So I want to, I want to say some words. And if that's your desire, you want to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I need Jesus. Father, I've committed sins. I've lied. I've taken things. I've done things I'm ashamed of. But I confess those sins to you right now. And I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose for me. And I'm inviting you to live on the inside of me, to be my God and my Father. God, I thank you that I am saved, that I am set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I got great news for you. You just prayed the most important prayer you ever prayed, and that's the prayer to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you pray that prayer, I want you to reach out to us all right, I want you to send us a message. Our email address is, is in the, uh, the comment section. It's in the description of the video. Please reach out to us. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. But we want to encourage you because you're not alone in this fight. You're not alone. You're not by yourself during this journey. And, and we are here to help you to answer your questions, to, be, to support you, to pray with you, to pray for you. We're not here to judge you. We are here to help you. And, and we are not in this thing all by ourselves. God did not design us to be alone. That's why so many of us are having a hard time during this pandemic because we feel so alone. But I got good news. You are not alone, right? God is your Lord. He is your Father. He is your Abba. And we are your church. We are your family. So I want you to reach out to us. Just connect. Just say, hey, look, I prayed that prayer, and I, I want to know what to do next. And we're going to reach out to you. We're going to pray with you. We're going to help you through this process and, and, to, and to help you to be successful. My, last, my next prayer and my last prayer is for those who have heard this message and, and who want to grow in their faith who want to take that next step in their development. You might find yourself discouraged, but you want to really embrace. You want to frame. You are expecting something, uh, and you want to live your life in that way. And I want to pray a prayer of encouragement for you. Father, thank you, God, for those who have heard this message. First of all, God, I want to give you glory and honor, Lord God, for all the people who have come out to hear today. And I pray, Father, that you would just cause us, God, to be encouraged. Help us, God, to learn and focus on being faithful to give our best, to work unto you, to do more than is asked. God, help us, Lord God, to work towards excellence. God, that people would see the God in us, Lord, and glorify our Father in heaven. Father, I pray today, Lord God, that you would be glorified, that you would be exalted. I pray today, Father God, that you, Lord God, would uh, just touch your people. Raise us up, God, to truly embrace this season. Raise us up, Father God, to truly focus on excellence. Father God, to focus on being good stewards to focus on learning, to focus, God, not on complaining, whining, uh, blaming, and, and wanting to quit. 
Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this season that we are in. Because even in this, it has a purpose. Lord God, we long for our deliverance. We long for our rescue. We long, Lord God, for our prayers to be answered. But while we are waiting, God, continue to develop us. While we are waiting, continue to prune us, continue to shape us, continue to mold us into who you called us to be. Father, we love you and we honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I want to thank you so very much for tuning in to today's message. I want to thank you for participating with us, for worshiping God with us. It is our privilege to serve you. It is our privilege to to honor God with you. And we are so grateful that you connected with us this morning. And and we want to encourage the members of our church. We We want to encourage everyone who's listening to this message to really tap into God on a deeper level. We want, to t- we want you to tap in on Wednesdays and Thursdays when we have our small groups. We want you to tap in through our devotional process. We want, to tap in, want you to tap in through serving, through giving, right? God has given us time, talents, and treasures, but he wants us to give him our absolute best. So I want to encourage you today to live out your faith. I want to encourage you today that if you find yourself discouraged, guess what? Today is a new day, and I'm excited about that because with him, Uh, Every day is a brand new mercy. So I want to encourage you this week, no matter where you are, no matter what you've been through, God's with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And and we are praying with you. We are praying for you. I pray God's blessing upon you, upon your family. Right? I pray he bless you coming in. I pray he bless you going out. You know, whatever you are going through, guess what? God's got it under control. And I want to encourage you today. I'm so grateful that you're with us this morning. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. I pray you have nothing but the best week. May heaven shine upon you. May God give you peace. May he bless you to a thousand generations. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great week.